It's hard being evil. Today, I'm going to work on the Zoom mask. This video tutorial is going to have several different parts to it um, that will help you when you're building things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how to get extra definition and detail in your foam. When you're making foam helmets and things, you have limitations. You can heat it up, you can bend it, you can concave it, you can do a lot of things with it, but when it comes to making a mask that has a little bit more realism in it for a character such as this raised eyebrow area and cheek, you can't really do that with foam. Sure, you can stretch it some, you can get some detail, but to get this amount of detail, you're going to have to do a little extra type of work, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Also, Ryan here, he wanted to know how I did masks, so I'm going to show how to do masks from start to finish with my templating, and that'll help Ryan with that question. And also, Tanner here was looking for a little insight on making a full helmet with a face plate, so this will also help Tanner out. So this video will address those three points, how to make a full helmet with a face shield, how to get extra detail, and how to do a template on a face mold. So let's get started. Time to run. We're going to begin with having some reference images handy. It's always good to have references. And then you also want your fat head or whatever kind of head form you're going to use. I'm going to create the face guard with some stiff paper, which is actually a manila folder. I'm going to cut this to size and then I'm going to bend and fold and tape it into place until I have the shape that I am looking for, which is this. This is what I want the end result to look like. Basically the nose and the mouth will be hidden from sight. So now I'm going to begin making my template. And to make a template with a head form like this, once I have the shape ready, I just need some glue and a paper bag, or plastic bag, I'm sorry. Spray a light and thin layer of the glue onto your head form. We're only going to do half. And then we're going to cover the whole thing, pressing down with the plastic bag to make sure it's really on there, getting all the contours. If you have any extra parts that are hanging over, like right here, I just add a little bit of masking tape to hold it and make it nice and tight. You don't have to do that. You can do that with the duct tape later, but that's just something I prefer to do. And next we're going to get out a roll of duct tape. As you can see, I just basically put a center line in here. And with that duct tape, we're going to start creating the template. And we're just going to follow that center line and press down using a lot of pressure when using the duct tape. So it really holds the shape that we're making here. Make, make sure you're getting really good into the eye area and things like that as well. Once that's done, I'm going to mark off all the center lines, the front and the back, as well as where the eyes are, and how the back of the helmet's going to look using my reference images along with the sides and things like that. Once you have all that in place, start cutting your template out, going down the center lines, cutting the eyes and everything and you can see the one line that I have right in the center well actually one like a quarter of the head if you were to go about three inches from the center you could see that one line there that's going to be the separator for my template to help it curve so as I'm cutting things out you'll see that it's going to separate into two main pieces which is going to be the center of the head and then the side of the head here's where I'm separating those two different pieces if you don't separate them here, you're going to try to bend the foam beyond its capacity to actually bend, and that'll be a problem. So as you can see, I also cut out the eye and snipped it right at the nose, right at the bridge where the nose and the forehead would meet. That's the only way you're really going to get your template to lay down flat. So I've got one part off, and I'm going to take off the second, and then we're going to transfer all of this to paper, which is some just some cardstock thick paper, construction paper if you want. And I'm just going to trace it so I can use that. It's a whole lot easier to do it that way. And here I've got some foam sheets. 
I'm going to use these to make the helmet. I'm going to pin everything down with my new templates that I've made out of the stiffer paper and trace that onto my foam. I'm going to repeat this for both sides, not worrying about flipping the templates over because this type of foam is smooth and identical on both sides. And as I'm tracing, you notice I put little arrows on my template. This shows which sections align. And now we're ready to cut. Make sure you get a good vibration going with your hand and you can use that to cut your foam or you could just use one of these. So once you have everything uh, transferred to your foam, begin cutting everything out. Again, noting that I have the arrows there so I know where to align things after I'm done cutting them. You don't want to get confused. You could do hash marks, but it's not really necessary for something like this because we're going to use the table to help keep things flat. And you can see how it's lining up here. We're going to lay, lay two layers of barge rubber cement down, allowing five to ten minutes in between each layer for the glue to dry before we try to put things together. Once it's ready and dry, I'm going to use the table as a flat surface to help keep a good clean seam, and we're just going to stick it together. The other half I used a heat gun to preheat form a little bit to show you that you could also do that. It's not necessary to do, but it does help sometimes with more of the complicated curves. So this is what it looks like when it's pre-curved. It makes it a little bit easier to bend the foam to glue it. Once both sides are done, we're going to add two layers of the barge rubber cement to the inside here, allowing each one to dry five to ten minutes, just like the last ones. And once that's dry, we're going to begin sticking this together. Again, starting at one end and working your way up using a flat surface to help keep your seams as clean as possible. When it's done, I like to put mine back on my head form, make sure everything's fitting. And I'm going to make any adjustments I need. I made it a little tighter in the back, cut a little piece out and glued it in. I also add some glue at the bridge of the nose. And while that's drying, I used my heat gun to kind of help it get back into shape with my head form in place. Don't want to overheat it because you could ruin the glue. And you can see here that you get a little bit of ridges with some heat and some bending and pressing, but the eyes and the cheeks are not out where I'd like them to be. That's why we're going to do the next step. But before we do that, we're going to cut out, I'm sorry, burn in all of the detail we want. And then we're going to create the ear pieces. I just used something as a circle made the little hand-drawn flash symbol and made sure everything lined up, traced where I want it to go. And once it's, everything's ready, I just continue with that process. I took a smaller circle and traced it on the inside and then scored it with my knife, hit it with the heat gun, and that allowed it to open up so I could have a ring on the inside like you see here. Just a little extra detail. Now I'm going to apply the glue to the side of the mask and to the ear pieces. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go and touch some stuff up with some quick seal. I use this to hide seams. And you can use it for a lot of different things. Use a popsicle stick to make things nice and smooth. So I'm just going to put I'm just going to pour a little bit out and I'm going to use my popsicle stick as a way to apply it. I'm going to go over the seams that I want to hide a little better and just uh, put it on as smooth as possible making sure I'm filling in all them seams. Once the seams are done, I go over it with a wet finger to help smooth it out and feather everything. So when it dries, it'll be a whole lot more smooth. And this is a really good way to hide seams. At least make them a whole lot less obvious. Now that the ear pieces are dry, I put them in place gently to make sure everything's lining up. And once I like how it is, I press them into the foam so everything sticks really well with contact cement. Now I wanted to bring the eyebrows and the cheekbones out more. And what I did here is use something which is just air dry foam. Not foam, air dry clay. This is a Crayola's version and I just pull a little bit out, work it into a little, little log or noodle or sausage and I just begin putting it on and it doesn't really stick well to the foam so you really have to work it to get it to stick. Uh, just kind of feather out the edges into the foam the best you can. You could probably add a light layer of 
of spray adhesive as well to help it stick, but I didn't go that direction. I just kept working it until it started to stick. And once it did, I could go over it with a wet finger and kind of smooth it out. And that also helped break down that clay a little bit and smooth it out into the, the foam, which smoothed out the edges and also helped it to stick. I just continue to rub and pinch and mold these forms the way I like until I got a pretty good idea of the shape that I was going for. And once you're done with that, you just leave it to dry overnight and then you can come back and do some more work with it. Now I decided just to want, just to make sure everything holds in place real well, I'm going to put two layers of Mod Podge on at this point. This is basically just to cover the clay and uh, make sure it's a good contact to the foam and doesn't fall off. And once that's dry, I'm going to go over the whole thing with a light sandpaper, a very fine grit sandpaper. It kind of brings down some of the rough edges and makes it a little smoother for an end product. I also went through and used some more of the DAP cement, I'm sorry, the DAP quick seal to smooth out the transition between the brows and the foam as well. And once everything was nice and dry, I went over and gave two layers of Plasti Dip to help hold everything into place as well. And moving on to making the neck piece, I am not a sewer, so this is just how I did it. I made another template just like I did previously with a little bit of spray adhesive and some plastic bag. Using the mask as reference of how high I want to go up and everything, I put everything into place and then I added the duct tape the same way I did with the other template. And I'm going to mark the underside of where the mask is going to sit so I have a good reference of how that's going to line up. And I also do the center in the front and the center in the back. That way I only have to do half of the actual template in each side. Or I just duplicate that one half to get the whole template. I'll cut that free and transfer that onto stiff cardstock as well. I'll go about a half inch out around it to give myself a little extra room to work for sewing allowance. I've got this black stretchy material that I'm going to use. I'm going to trace this on with a white sharpie and then I'm going to cut it all out. Now I have two pieces that I later went upstairs and took a needle and thread by hand and just stitched the center two pieces together. Uh, nothing too technical there. If you can't figure out how to hand stitch one, you know, maybe a three inch section, which took me about 10 minutes, uh, you can Google it. That, it's pretty simple to do. And then once that was done, I made sure everything was sitting right. I just taped it into place, put the helmet back on, and used some masking tape to mask around where the mask would sit and line up with this piece. I'm doing that to make sure everything's fitting right and also I'm going to use this tape as a way to keep the glue off of the extra bits of material. So I'm going to lay this down on something and then I'm going to apply some glue. Again, two layers just like you do with the foam, allowing it to dry in between each layer and the tape is a barrier to keep some of the glue at bay and off of the actual material. I'm also going to add glue to the inside of the mask and along the actual rim of it so I can push the material up to the rim so there's not a big gap between the mask and the actual material. So once this has had two layers put on and it's had time to dry, I'm going to go ahead and connect everything just by starting in the center of the, the chin where the sewing seam is that I made. Line that up to the center start sticking that and then working my way around until I get to the back. Once everything's nice and stuck into place, I'm going to take two pieces of Velcro and do the same thing you do with Velcro if you're using the rubber cement. Add some rubber cement to one side of that as well as to the material that you're going to adhere to. Allow it to dry. Do a second layer do that, allow it to dry again, and then put it on. I put one on each side so they overlap, and once that is dry, 
I can use the Velcro to hold the back closed. And once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. That's pretty much the finished piece minus paint. You can leave it here, but I'm going to decide, I decided to go ahead and put some acrylic paint on it. I just took some black paint, applied that over it, and then I finished it up with a matte varnish that's not glossy that will protect the acrylic paint that's underneath. And here you go, the final product. Didn't take too long, just the only problem was waiting for the clay to dry. How well the ridges show up using the clay. Hey, thanks for watching, but before you run off to make your own awesome cosplay armor and props, click that subscribe button down below so you'll always be updated when new videos are released. Also, if you need more tips, tricks, and tutorials, you can stop by www.ccosplay.com for much more information and articles that are released on a regular basis. And last but not least, stay crafty.